Hello everybody and welcome back again to Mass Effect 3. We are back on the Normandy after finishing our first DLC, the Omega DLC. And today I would like to go back to the mm, story mission. So that would be Priority Perseus Vale. Because I'm pretty sure that the rest of this is just um, fetch quests. And, well, yeah, apparently I did not finish the side quests uh, in the Omega DLC. I thought I've been looking around thoroughly enough, but apparently I did not. So, it, it's kind of strange though, that they don't disappear from from your journal, because it's not like I can go back there and finish them. So, yeah, this happened. <laughs> anyway, um, this is going to be our next mission, but for completeness sake, as usual, I will try to catch up with all of my companions, just in case they have something new to say. Apparently Dr. Chuck was wants to talk to me, and I do have new messages as well. But yeah, let's let's make our usual round, and as always, um, I will only include it if they have new dialogue. Shepard, remember our agreement? We'd open a <laughs> bottle of Cerise brandy every year, and it's my turn to buy. But it hasn't been a year yet. Yes, well, something tells me we won't have the chance a few months from now, so... Indulge my impatience. <laughs> Save it for our victory, let's drink. <laughs> huh, good question, good question. Um, I, I don't want to appear like, you know, I consider the, the war lost and uh, believe that we all will be dead in a few months. But on the other hand, I think it's it's kind of like, you know, a time where you have to savor the moment and you shouldn't postpone stuff uh, just for the sake of it. So let's say let's drink. Plus, when when has Eros ever uh, declined an invitation to have a drink? So let's do this. You grab the glasses. I'll open the bottle. <laughs> and Jeff says, Jack, Jacqueline, subject zero, <laughs> sorry, but it's ma'am to me. I'd like to keep my Admiral Winky. <laughs> oh, Shepard, you know, I just realized. You've never called me by my first name. Neither did you. Well, neither have you. <laughs> right. And I never will. <laughs> you are Commander Shepard. Hero of the Citadel, conqueror <laughs> of the Collectors, savior of the galaxy. Using your first name just disrespects everyone you're fighting for, alive or gone. Okay. Why? <laughs> that makes <laughs> no sense. <laughs> Consider it a lady's prerogative, then. Come, let's have a toast. <laughs> well... I have no problems calling her by her first name, so <laughs> let's do that. To a woman, I'm proud to call my friend. <laughs> I'm lucky to have you with me, Karen. And to you, dear friend. It is my great honor to share this journey with you. Commander Chef, <laughs> and good fortune to us all. I drink to that. I totally drink to that. Lesson this time. Even a Krogan couldn't match you drink for drink. <laughs> That's probably a wise idea. Also, why are you standing in the table? So, Udina finally went over the edge. I never really liked the man. Now I know why. <laughs> Hello, Commander. All right, all right. So, um, we had a nice little drink with Dr. Chuck. Was that is that that was a nice little scene. Um, like I said, I hope it's not going to be our last drink, but it may may very well be, you know, you never know. We already lost so many people in this war. You, you don't really know who's who's going to be on this wall next, so yeah. For one who claims to be an expert on my people, <laughs> your Asari knows very little. Well, it's not exactly her fault. You've been dead for 50,000 years. It's, it's hard enough to find out what happened a few thousand years ago, but 50,000 years ago? That is, that's quite a, quite a large number, you know. Your Asari continues to question me. I'm beginning to <laughs> wish her kind had never learned to talk. <laughs> Don't be so mean. Commander. <laughs> Does Dr. Tassoni ever let you in her room? Because <laughs> she keeps me out. 
Well, what do you think? I'm the commander of the ship. Do you really think she can lock me out of her room? Maybe she just doesn't like you. <laughs> or maybe, you know, she has some secrets that she doesn't want you to know. <laughs> That's probably the reason. Or both. I'm liking the new you, Esteban. It's about time you loosened up a little. <sighs> not sure how drinking mezcal late into the night makes me a better crewman. <laughs> how does it not? Gives you heart. You need heart to fight this kind of war. A heartburn, maybe. Seriously, could we at least get some decent tequila? Hey, you're the procurement specialist. Set us up. I I concur. I concur. Ma'am. And finally, let's go and talk to James. Hey. Okay. Well, I did uh, talk to everyone, and well, most people did not have any new dialogue. So I'm just going to cut it from the recording. But I do have some new messages, I believe. So let's have a look at that before we continue. Yep, quite a few of them. From Bryn Cole, Dear Commander Shepard, thank you again for all you did to get our group out of that facility on Galax. Admiral Hackett is an amazing man and it's a privilege to work under him. The construction of the Crucible is presenting its challenges, but my team and I are determined to crack its mysteries. Although I never rely on luck in this instance, I fear we may need a little. Stay safe, Commander. I hope our path cross again. Sincerely, Dr. Bryn Cole. Okay. Citadel Mira from Jacob Taylor. Well, I already met him on the Citadel. <laughs> Hey Shepard, this Crucible project is intense. Bryn and the others are on it around the clock. Pretty soon I'll have to make a run to the Citadel to pick up some equipment at the hospital. <laughs> if you've got time, want to meet me there? Things are so crazy on Galax. <coughs> Things were so crazy on Galax. It'd be good to see you in a quieter place, you know. Hope to see you around, Jacob. Well, we already took care of that. And a memento from Aria to Loke. Shepard, I had Petrovsky's chessboard sent to the Normandy. It just doesn't go with the new decor I have planned for afterlife. Aria. Oh well, I, I appreciate that. You know, maybe I can uh, practice a little bit and then beat a uh, trainer. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, let's go and um, continue with the next main story mission. So, this is about the Quarians. The Quarian fleet offers both technical specialists and support ships to assist with the Crucible. Meet the Quarian admirals and obtain their help in the war effort. So, we're finally going to see the Quarians again and... I don't know. Maybe the Geth will be involved too. So, let's head out to... the Far Rim. Far, far over here the only place that I haven't visited yet. And, well, here we are. Quarian envoy ships speak with Quarians. Let's do it. This diplomatic frigate is like no Quarian ship on record. Its hull is relatively low temperature and it appears to be venting heat in a manner similar to that of the Normandy when it comes out of stealth mode. How the Quarians develop this high-tech vessel is unknown, but its hailing frequencies are open and welcoming messages are being tight-beamed to the Normandy. Okay, let's talk. Commander Shepard, hm. a pleasure to see you again, though I wish it were under better circumstances. I remember you. I'd hope for your support in the <coughs> fight against the Reapers. What's going on? Seventeen days ago, with precision strikes on four Geth systems, the Quarians initiated the war to retake our homeworld. Which was a clear violation of our agreement <laughs> with the Council to avoid provoking the Geth. A treaty violation is nothing compared to recovering our homeworld and advanced AI technology. I remember all of these people. <laughs> I remember all of these people. They were at the trial uh, in the last game when they were trying to um, punish Tali for allegedly smuggling Geth parts on board the migrant fleet. So, yeah, tell me about your history. Your homeworld? You mean Renok? Correct, Commander. 300 years ago, we lost our world to our own AI creations, the Geth. After we attempted to kill them. We didn't try to kill them, Chorus. We tried to deactivate them. It wasn't murder. Okay, um... Huh, again, um, they, they kind of like to make you 
take a side here with, you know, the little information that you get. But, you know, after talking to Legion and knowing what I know now, I tend to think that the, maybe the Quarians weren't acting completely <laughs> moral when they, you know, tried to deactivate all the guests, so I guess I'm going with that. No, it was murder. <laughs> Commander, the Quarians never intended to create a true AI. It was an accident. Which you chose to correct by trying to kill them. Yeah. Don't bother. Admitting we were wrong would undercut the justification for this suicidal invasion plan. So, you are trying to retake your homeworld now? Well, aren't there like bigger fish to fry? You know, like the Reapers? Huh. Okay, yeah, um, that was definitely a mistake then. You're throwing yourselves at the Geth? Again? And this time, we may have destroyed our people for good. We'd driven the Geth back to their home system. When this signal began broadcasting to all Geth ships. The Reapers. Under Reaper control, the Geth are significantly more effective. Our fleet is pinned in the home system. If we're going to win, we are... Win? You insisted on involving the civilian <laughs> ships, Admiral Geralt. We need to retreat or we'll lose the live ships. Where's the signal coming from? Here. A Geth dreadnought. It can outgun anything we've got and it's heavily defended. The Normandy stealth drive can get us in undetected. I could board, then disable the Reaper command signal. Yes. Cutting off the signal should throw the Geth into complete disarray. Alright, I will do this and then you can retreat. And while they're confused, you get to a mass relay and retreat. Good. Our civilian ships have seen too much fighting already. Are you certain you can disable <laughs> the signal? We'll get you out of there safely, Admiral. Our newest Admiral has also volunteered to offer technical expertise. <laughs> well, look at Tali that. Vast Normandy, Admiral. Reporting for duty. Glad you could make it, Tally. <laughs> Admirals, already a team to hit that dreadnought. Thank you, Commander. Admiral? <laughs> it's mostly a formality. I'm an expert on the Geth. That you are. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. And I would like to help you if I can. If I'd known it was this bad, I would have come sooner. You've had your own troubles. I'm sorry about Earth. We've got the largest fleet in the galaxy. If you can help us, we'll hit the Reapers with everything we've got. Or however much is left from this stupid war. <laughs> I thought you'd support <clears throat> the invasion. No. After talking to Legion, I thought maybe there was a chance for peace. So why help them? I'm an admiral. People look to me for guidance. Public disagreement would divide the fleet. I'll get your people out of here safely, Tally. Thanks, Shepard. And just so you know, I need to keep things strictly business in front of the admirals. If you'd like to catch up, let's talk somewhere private. Sure thing. Okay. I'm ready to hit that dreadnought whenever you are. Well, um... And now I'm suddenly... All on my own. Let's head back to... The bridge. So, um... What exactly do you want me to do? The Quarians have tried to retake their homework from the Geth. Unfortunately, the Geth have been upgraded by the Reapers, and the Quarian fleet is trapped. Travel to the Quarian home system and disable the Geth dreadnought broadcasting Reaper control signal. Um. All right, but uh. Commander. Where where exactly did Tali go? Told me that Cerberus started out as an alliance black op. Black ops always go bad. If you have to deny the action, it was a crappy action. <laughs> I, I like I like the way you think. So um is is Tali on board my ship? I mean she said we could like catch up. Um Well, it's not Tali, but Admiral Ran is here. So Oh hang on a second. 
There she is. That dreadnought is tearing through our fleet. Let me know when you're ready to hit it. Um, yeah, let's talk a little bit first. So what happened to you the last, I don't know, month? So how did you end up back with your fleet, Tally? When the war started, the Admiralty Board asked for my help. I had more recent contact with the Geth than most of my people. They hadn't filled the spot on the board left by my father. I was invited in. It's just a technicality. I'm far <laughs> too young to be a real admiral. Don't sell yourself short, Tally. The board needed your expertise. You needed the authority that comes with rank. All right. So how's the war going? How did the war with the Geth get started anyway? Admiral Zen developed a scanning countermeasure that interferes with Geth active scans. It's like a flashbang grenade. It effectively crippled the Geth ships in combat. My fleet couldn't pass up the chance to attack. Well, if, if we are to fight the Geth, then I guess it could be useful. Could we use it to fight the Reapers? Or the it Reapers? only works against the Geth, okay. unfortunately. Their AI lets them use extremely detailed LADAR pings. Zen's countermeasure overwhelmed them with garbage data. And it's useless now that the Reapers have upgraded their processing power. Alright, so apparently you're back with the Quarians. How is it being back with the fleet? Right now it's exhausting. I'm an admiral in the middle of a war. I just want us to get out of this alive. Everything else can wait. Well, maybe you can join me. When this is over, I could use your help. I can't, Shepard. If we survive this, we'll have a homeworld. My people <laughs> need me. You could help your people's homeworld by fighting the Reapers. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not thinking that far ahead yet. Alright, fair enough. And yeah, what about Legion? So what about Legion? It returned to Geth space after you turned yourself into the Alliance. And you haven't seen it since? I... Uh, Legion and I sent a few messages. I was hoping we could try negotiation. But I was outvoted three to two. Admiral Chorus was the only one who believed it would work. And since the attack? Any idea where Legion is now? No. In our last message it told me that the Geth were having trouble reaching consensus. And then nothing? Maybe it was fighting the Reaper takeover? Or maybe it didn't want to give intel to an enemy. I could have warned it about the invasion. I didn't. You'd have been betraying your own people. I never wanted to be an admiral. <laughs> well, sometimes sometimes life doesn't doesn't work out the way you want it. Okay, well, thanks for catching up. Talk to you later, Tally. If you want to catch up in private, Call me up to your cabin. Oh, well, yeah, sure, we can we can do that. And yeah, why not why not talk to her as well? Shepard, the fleet is under heavy fire. We need to hit the dreadnought. Um well tell me more about the fleet first. I'd like to know about your patrol fleet. In peacetime, the patrol fleet managed navigation, internal security, and intership conflicts or crimes. Now, we mostly guard the heavy fleet's flank. It's mostly light frigates or fighters. And the civilian fleet? Tell me about the civilian fleet. Our civilian ships, medical vessels, and live ships. Admiral Chorus coordinates them. Though individual ships' captains still have power. In peacetime, they made up the bulk of our fleet. Now, our strength would even give the Turians pause. And who has the largest fleet? Tally said you had the largest fleet in the galaxy. The Turians have more dreadnoughts. Their overall military force is larger than our heavy fleet by far. Hmm. But before we began this war, we jury rigged every Quarian ship in the flotilla for battle. Even our live ships had cannons. <laughs> that's crazy, that's smart. I don't know. I mean, even the live ships need to defend them. It, it really depends on how you want to use the weapons, right? Use what you got. Indeed. With the modifications, our live ship cannons are comparable to the main guns on a dreadnought. Impressive. 
They lack the armor of the real dreadnought, but they can back the heavy fleet formidably when needed. All right, and tell me about the heavy fleet. What can you tell me about Admiral Garrel's heavy fleet? It was our main military force before the war, comprised of all Korean vessels suited for sustained combat. It can't compare to the Turian forces, of course, but we have a number of heavy frigates and advanced fighter forces. Um, okay. And yeah, Admiral Zen. Now, if I remember correctly, Admiral Zen in the last game was the one who was the most hostile towards Geth and the one most pushing for a war against the Geth. And um, Admiral Chorus was the one with a funny name. And he was he was kind of hostile towards Tali, but he was also the only one who was like sensible enough to know that this is not the time to start another war <laughs> with the Geth. So I do remember him because of that. I don't exactly remember Admiral Garrel's stance, but I think he tended to be, you know, anti geth and pro-war as well, although not quite as strongly as um, Admiral then. So, yeah, let's let's ask her about um, the Admiral. Which fleet does Admiral Zen command? Special <coughs> projects. It's not a fleet per se, just a few research mm -hmm. vessels. Her technical breakthroughs have put us within striking distance of the home world. I see. All right, well, thanks for the information. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you, Commander. All right, all right. Um, plus, I, I probably have gathered more. Yes, I have more um, war assets. Let me have a look at that. Omega Iso Horde. That... That is quite an impressive um, amount of points. <laughs> As promised, Ari has started transporting her easy supplies to the Alliance. Though the initial delivery was somewhat hampered by Alliance Security's unease in dealing with a group that most think of as space pirates, the transfer of resources is now ongoing. To facilitate the process, a new freight company flying under the Omega flag has been founded. The Omega Coalition of Cargo Transporters is a ragtag group that has nonetheless proven to be unerringly successful in both the swiftness of their deliveries and the security of its cargo. Alright, very nice. Omega Raiding Fleet. Though, com though comprised of a disparate range of ships, the Omega RUM fleet has proven itself to the Alliance in every way that counts. Their first engagement occurred during orientation when the Alliance um, when the Alliance ships they were meeting were overwhelmed by Reaper Tech. RUM was told to avoid the rendezvous point, but they instead followed Fusion, their flagship straight into combat to save the doomed ships. The Alliance ships were saved and RUM, were recklessly led by a cheerfully ruthless Captain Gerald, has since been detailed to the most troubled Reaper fronts and each time has helped turn the tide. RUM lead landing parties also have a sterling and somewhat bloodthirsty reputation, particularly when it went up against Cerberus phantoms. Well, not sorry about that. And, well, the General actually has, is in a war as it now. General Oleg Petrovsky is now in Alliance custody and is being interrogated at an undisclosed location. Due to the nature of his work on Omega, the interrogation and debriefing team is being led by both military and science expert, experts to ensure the ver veracity of Petrovsky's information. The location of an important Cerberus laboratory is, has already been provided by the prisoner and has since been destroyed. Alliance officials believe Petrovsky can still provide substantial critical information on Cerberus activities and are likely to approach the asylum procedures that have been started by the Alliance legal aid assigned to Petrovsky's case. Well, so apparently um, keeping him alive was useful. It's kind of funny that he's listed under alien and not ex Cerberus as you would expect. But, um, whatever. Okay, so... Let's let's go go to the cabin and and catch up with Tali, and then I guess we can have a look at our main mission. Commander, Eddie's Eddie's. But I I gotta say though, you two have really really boring jobs. I'm I'm sorry about that. Commander. <laughs> 
Okay, let's go and talk to Tali. Um, yes, invite Tali. Tali, I'm free if you'd like to come up. I'll just be a moment. <laughs> Thanks for asking me up. I couldn't talk freely in front of Ron. You okay? No, no, I'm really <laughs> not. Seventeen million lives are riding on me. And I don't know if I can save them. Well, it's not only your responsibility. I mean, there are other admirals, right? You're doing everything you can. If the fleet falls, it won't be because of you. I helped my father and... And Zen's ideas, the new tech that made an invasion too good to pass up, that's based on my father's work. If <laughs> they die because of me, if... if I don't... We'll get them out of there safely, Tally. I couldn't do this without you, Shepard. I feel like I'm bluffing, trying to convince them that the Admiral's daughter knows what she's doing. Not the Admiral's daughter. The Admiral. <laughs> I know. And at least now, I can push back against the worst ideas. That's why I accepted the position. And because of you. Me? When they offered me this position, I asked myself what you'd do. I thought you'd take the chance to make things better. That probably sounds stupid. It's just... I know I'm not really qualified for this. You're doing fine, Tally. And thanks. I should get back before the Admirals get into trouble again. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Well, you shouldn't... You shouldn't sell yourself short, Tally. You should... Oh, um... Well... Just randomly unlocked a bonus power from her. That's interesting. <laughs> anyway, let me go back to the bridge. And... Yeah, I guess um, we will we will go and start this mission now. Uh, let's see, where do I have to go for this? <coughs> Disable the dreadnought and the Perseus Veil. Okay, let's do this. Well, what are these? Guess debris field, the migrant fleet, and the dreadnought. All right, let's do this. Guess dreadnought. Scans of the guest dreadnought orbiting Rannoch reveal an intimidating array of features, from an improved main gun and ultraviolet anti-ship lasers to increased thruster output. The guest workforce never demands rest, wages, or autonomy, and in the creation of their flagship, they were limited only by time and raw materials. The damage inflicted by the Quarian fleet appears minor at best. Well, that's just wonderful. So, well, um, hey, Tali's actually in my party. Okay, okay, so uh, apparently she has to come along. She has sabotage, combat drone, energy drain, defense drone, quarian machinist. Mm. Let's take Caden. I mean, it's a very tech heavy team, but that should work well against the Geth, so let's do this. Um, I'm fine with the weapons. I will give you different ones, though. Let's modify this. <laughs> I don't think Tali's going to do any melee fighting, so... But you can have this one. And this one. And yeah, I guess at some point I do want to buy a few more upgrades so that I can give them other weapons. Um, maybe you want some with a slightly bigger fire rate or higher fire rate. Hmm. 
Even shielded enemies are stunned by the force of a blast from his weapon. Yeah, let's let's try this. And a bit more damage. Yes, you can take this one as well. Okay, um, let's let's go. And oh yes, I can level up. Uh, I'm going to level up the overload. Mm. Ah, yeah, I I have to. Have a look at Caden's barrier. Um, in in James' case, I never really used his fortification because he doesn't really die. I have to see how how Caden is doing without the barrier, because I would prefer not to use it for the faster cooldown speed. But um, let's see, decreased damage taken by five percent, increase the damage force and radius of the detonation by thirty percent. Oh, I can detonate the barrier too. Oh, that's interesting. Let's do this. And sure, maybe some points into Cryoblast. And now I have to level up Tali. Okay, let's do this. Recharge speed, health and shield bonus by 20%. Yeah, Tali tends to be a little bit um, flimsy, so maybe let's give her a little bit more health and shields. Um, I'm definitely going for the tech power damage and duration here. Increase recharge speed of drone powers. Yeah, let's do this. Energy drain is pretty useful. Damage. Yeah, let's go for more damage. Some basic sabotage. Combat drone and defense drone. Uh, well, I guess I will put at least one point in the defense drone, but I will focus on the combat drone. Because I usually like the offensive powers more than the defensive ones, so. <laughs> Take this one and this one. Oh, this could be useful. Chain lightning. Mm. And I guess a little bit into defense drone is nice as well. Alright, um, that should be enough for now. Let's go. We're approaching the Quarian home system. ETA to Rannoch, five minutes. What have you got from the convoys? Pretty much a big old shitstorm, Commander. Hm. I have detected several hundred unique ship signatures engaged in active combat. Yeah, like I said. <laughs> Take us in, Joker. Stealth drive engaged. Only way they'll detect us is if you all start singing the Russian national anthem. <laughs> wow, that is a, a... You would think a dated reference at this uh, age, because that was a reference to Hunt for Red October. Is this movie still being watched in 200 years? <laughs> My cyber warfare suite has accessed their docking protocols. Once we're aboard, we find whatever's broadcasting the Reaper signal and shut it down. 
Tally's our expert on guest software. She'll be handling hacking and security. Good to see you again, Tally. <laughs> you too, Caden. How's the Omni tool? Still <laughs> using the logic arrest? It's still the best model. Not for running multiple attack processes simultaneously. <laughs> you need a Nexus. Nexus shield enhancements are <laughs> years behind the curve. That's why you overclock the microframe. <laughs> Shepard, you two are such nerds. All teams except one are physically secured. I see the free one. Pretty torn up though. Too risky for the whole team. I'll secure the docking area. Everyone else can follow me over. Roger that, Commander. We'll just stay here. You know, quietly. <laughs> right. Hang tight. It'll just be a minute. <laughs> Alright. Um, well, that is interesting. I need to get to the airlock. Oh, uh, how? Oh, I can. Oh, I see. There's no gravity. It's just my gravity boots, so I can just walk all over this place. No wonder the Quarians were having trouble. That ship is enormous. It, it is. is. Larger than an alliance dreadnought. Hm. Thank you for that piece of trivia. Um. I don't know, this way? This is going almost too well. Something terrible will happen. How are you doing, Shepard? The lack of gravity is a little disorienting. The dreadnought has artificial gravity. You should be okay once you're on board. Okay. Till then, I'll make do with mag boots. Hey, take your time, Commander. We're fine until they, you know, look out a window. <laughs> Geth don't use windows, remember? Structural <laughs> weakness. Like the Geth are just sitting there saying, those organics would never try the no windows thing twice. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, well, this did, well, work almost without problems. <laughs> Looks like the rest of the team isn't using the docking tube. So I'm guessing you'd rather not solo the Dreadnought. Not if I, I can help try. it. <laughs> Ask Tally to get on the Dreadnought schematics. If she can point me at another docking tube, I'll override the controls and let the boarding party on. Alright. I've got gravity again. Great. I'm looking for... Got it. There should be a hull breach not far from your position. The nearest undamaged docking tube is on the other side. Alright, but before I'm going to do this, uh, let's end the episode here and I will try to, you know, get my, my crew on board this dreadnought in the next episode. So, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed and see you again next time.